Good morning, Mount Airy. Namaste. It is so good to see each of you on this morning. If you have not done so already, just wave at your neighbor so that they know that you are glad to see them on this morning. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you have bestowed upon each of us. We thank you for your loving kindness, oh God, that continues to flow. So God, we pray your blessings upon this service. We pray your blessings upon the man of God that shall bring forth your word. Anoint him afresh, God. Use him for your glory. We pray your blessings upon the musicians, the ministerial staff, and all those that will serve in this hour. So God, we give your name glory, honor, and praise because of another opportunity, another worship experience. We give you all the glory. And it is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. As Reverend Kathy said, it is so good to see each and every one of you here today. I thank the fact that we have the poinsettias and the wreath up. It gives us a sense of normalcy, that things may be returning to just a, a little bit of a normal level. And I ask that we just enter into this meditation with a, just an attitude of gratitude this morning just to say thank you for all the things that we just go through that we do come out so with that being said if we could just sit comfortably in our seats and just relax a little so that this way we can hear what needs to be heard we can see what needs to be seen. So let's take our first deep breath in and hold it and slowly release it. Another deep breath in and hold it and slowly release it. This is our time to just relax and just listen. Listen with our hearts, listen with our minds so that we don't miss anything that comes for us during this day or any other day. There's so much that goes on during the week, so much that stresses us out, so much meanness is out there. So if we could just take another deep breath in, hold it, and slowly release it. And let us just take a moment, just a moment to just relax, to just enjoy the quietness. Because somehow I just think that coming into this sanctuary is the most normal that we can get. So let us just enjoy it just for a moment. And as we do that, just control your breathing. Just breathe in and slowly breathe out.
Again, let us breathe in. Hold it and slowly release it. Another deep breath in. Hold it and slowly release it. And let us take our final deep breath in. Hold it and slowly release it. Namaste. Christ, we say good morning and welcome to Mount Airy. Come on all over the house. Come on, let's stand to our feet as we begin to worship and adore our loving God. We ask you and invite you to come on and just come to the throne of the praise and the worship to our God this morning. We just want to invite him to come on in and have his way. We tell him that we worship and adore you, God. We worship and adore you God hallelujah we worship you come on and say come come let us adore him come on come let us adore him kneel down before him kneel down before him we say worship and adore him worship and adore him come on over the house just say come Come let us adore him. Come let us adore him. Kneel down. Kneel down before him. We come to worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, can you say Emmanuel? Come on and say Emmanuel. Come on and call on his name. Say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. He's closer than you know. Come on and say Emmanuel. One more time. Come on and shout out Emmanuel. Emmanuel. All over the house, we invite you to invite him and say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Oh, God is with us today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Emmanuel. Can't you feel him all in this place? Emmanuel. Come on. Call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Come on and just say, we worship you. Because of what you done, because who we you are. You. Come on in and say we worship you, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, all over the house from the top. Just say to somebody, come, come. We come to adore our God today. Come, come let us adore him. It's okay to kneel today. Kneel down and say worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Oh, 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 come. Come let us adore him. Come let us adore him. We come kneeling down. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore come on. Him. With all that you have, can you call him and say Emmanuel? Emmanuel. Closer to me than I know. Emmanuel. Come on and say, Emmanuel. 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 Come on and say, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Oh, God is with us today. Yeah. Emmanuel. I can feel you all in this place, Lord. Emmanuel. Hey, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Glory, Lord. Hey, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Oh, God is with us today. Yeah. 
tell them we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, oh Lord. We worship you. Come on, come on, come on. Say we worship you. We worship we you. Worship you. Oh, because of who you are to us, oh Lord. We worship you. We worship you and adore you in this place, we oh God. One more time. We worship you. We worship you. Come on and bless the Lord. Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. Well, we're in December. You're loving it? Hallelujah. He's brought us through. Times have been interesting, but God is faithful and so good. Can you just say to yourself, he's so good, he's so good, he's so good. We can't praise you enough, God. We owe you our lives. We can't even thank you enough, God, even if we tried. Because he's been that good. Hallelujah. And we come to declare this morning, we serve a great and awesome God. Regardless of what you're going through, God got you. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you. I owe you my life can praise you enough even if I try cause you've been come on help us say so good stay right there say you've been, you've been so good so good one more time say you've been so Lord, you're good, say. Lord, you are good. Been so good. You've been so good. Oh, yeah. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't break you. Come on, tell him. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. To me, to me. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, oh. You've been so good. Oh, you are good. Come on and tell them you've been better than That's it. I can't praise you. I owe you my life. That's it. Tell them. Can't praise you. Even if I try. Good to me. 
Better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. Come on. Better than good to me. Come on. Better than good to me. You've been better. Come on. Stay there. Tell them. I almost lost my mind. But you stepped in on time. I was ill, oh God. Better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been better. I'm trying to let it go. But he's been so good. Come on. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been better. One more time. Come on. I lost my way. You helped me out when I was dying. You helped me, oh Lord. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. How many know that God is a good God? I can't let this opportunity pass. Without saying that he's been a great God. Some of us are wrestling with some stuff that we don't know how we're going to make it out. But remember that God is a great and awesome God. He loves us so much. Come on and say, you've been so good. You've been so good. You've been loved. But I almost lost my mind. Didn't know what to do. You've been. You've been so good to me. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many doors. So many ways. So many times you hear better than good to me. So many doors. So many, doors you so many ways. So many times, God. Been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times you heal me. Yes, shit. Been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been better. Hey, yeah. But better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. To me, so many doors you opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. Good to me, so many, so many doors you opened, so many. So many times you heal me. I know I'm not the only one. So many doors you open. So many ways you made. So many times you heal me. One more time. So many. So many doors you open. So many ways you made. So many times you heal me. One more time, so many, so many, so many doors you open, so many ways you made, so, so many, many times you heal. You've been better, better than good to me, better than, better than good to me, better than, better than good to me, better than, better than good to me.
So many, so many, so many, so many. brother who wrote this song, wrote this song fully aware of all that he was going through, fully aware that life didn't look good, life didn't feel good, and yet he was able to transcend what he was feeling and what he was seeing to say, God, in spite of it all, you've still been good. That's not only his testimony. God, we come to say that's our testimony. Because truth of the matter is, some of us feel like he felt. And some of us see some of the things that he saw. And we don't like it. And yet, God... It does not change the fact that you are still good and worthy of our praise and our honor. So God, in the name of Jesus, stir right now. Redirect right now. Reposition our intention right now so that we might focus a little while on giving you and casting our cares on you through our praise and our worship. Now fall afresh so that your people might be edified again and we might glorify you for you are good and worthy. In the name of Jesus the Christ, let every heart say amen. 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 Come on, if you know God is good. Didn't we used to sing a song, just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honoring, they all belong to you thank you thank you jesus for blessing me come on everybody sing oh just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me, for me, for me, oh, blessings and glory and honor and honor, they all Thank you, Jesus, for blessing, blessing, oh, just want to praise you forever. And ever, and ever, for for me, all blessings and glory, and honor, they all, 
Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. Oh, just want to praise you forever, forever, ever, and ever, and ever. For me, for me, oh, blessing and honor, they all thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm trying to get you to stretch in faith. Just want to praise you forever and ever. And ever, oh, 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 you've done for me, for me, oh, blessings and, and honor, they are, thank you, Jesus, for oh, blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Amen. Amen. Had to get that out the system. Amen. 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 Lectionary text for today found in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter. We're going to extend our reading from the lectionary text. When you find it, you will find these words. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod Tetra of Galilee, his brother Philip Tetra of Iturea and Tretconus, and Lysenus Tetra of Abilene, during the high priest of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. For every valley shall be filled in, and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall be become straight, and the rough ways smooth. And all the people will see God's salvation. And all of God's people will see God's salvation. Let me say that again, verse 6. And all of God's people will see God's salvation. I want to talk from the thought, do you see what I see? As I'm journeying again after season childhood with Ahmad and now again with Nyla and her excitement for this time of the year, this time where no matter what she received throughout the year, <laughs> she's looking forward to what she's gonna get from mama, papa, mama and dad. And yet I will admit to you today that while growing up in South Central Los Angeles, I would also look forward to the Christmas season season, not just for the gifts of the toys and the clothes. We would go to Zodi's and Fetco for a Target. That 
Tarjay for Tarjay. I'm sorry, Tarjay, for those of you who go. But I would also watch a few of the Christmas television specials. And one of my favorite specials was the one that would always include the song, Do You Hear What I Hear? Some of y'all remember that from the little drummer boy or the carol of the drums. The lyrics briefly said, said the night wind to the little lamb, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star, a star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. With a tail as big as a kite. I will admit that I love this song, and yet years later I discovered through the web and wisdom of Wikipedia that the song was originally written in, in October of 1962 with lyrics uh, by Noel uh, Regney and music by Gloria Baker as a plea for peace during the Cuban Missile Crisis, which brought about the threat of nuclear war. The music and lyrics uh, wanted to get the attention of the world about the danger we were putting our children in. Sounds like it could have been written today. And so this song interweaves the plight of endangered children with the birth of baby Jesus. And I remember this song literally gave me goosebumps, even though I wasn't even fully aware of its history. It moved me knowing that something significant was being sung through a little boy. Mm. <laughs> and although the title of the song refers to hearing, it is the initial line, do you see what I see? that gripped my mind as I read the text, the liturgical text for today. Uh, for you do know that two people can see the same thing, yet walk away with two totally different perspectives of what they saw. One person can see trash and yet another person can see treasure. One person can see chaos and another person can see another opportunity. One person can see the glass half empty while another person can see the glass half full. One group of people can see this country uh, as wondering uh, why in the world a parent would equip a child with a gun for Christmas as though that's a legitimate. And yet another group of parents could see nothing wrong with that as though that's what this country has come to. Because the question is, what do you see? And I want to raise the question this morning, do you see what I see? For depending on the place of your perch or your vantage point, uh, that might just have a lot to determine how you see what you see. And I want to suggest to us today, as we navigate our way through this pandemic, as we engage ourselves again through the uncertainty of this moment and see the happenings of our text, particularly Luke's quoting of the prophet Isaiah in verse six about all humankind seeing God's salvation. I want to suggest that this passage will perhaps help us readjust our eyesight for the living of these days. For whatever the variant, whatever uh, the cause, whatever other virus may be lurching and waiting for us, it is still my prayer in this season of Advent that we, the people of God, will see as God sees. For I believe the Church of Jesus Christ is called to help 
people to see the salvation or the deliverance or the perspective of God in the midst of the suffering and the pain we hear and we see all around us. Yes, to acknowledge it. Yes, uh, to relate to it, but not allow it to consume or lock us in to the point that we do not understand the very purpose of God coming through flesh is to remind us that even in our darkest times, there is still the light of Christ. I also see in this text that the very people of God who needed to do the psych correction of their own in order to assist others in finding the right kind of focus in the fuzzy and frightening framing of our lives. And perhaps as we journey with Jesus, we too can be called to answer the questions of do you see what I see in the affirmative? Yes, I see the coming of God's salvation in our life where the world is, the word is made flesh and dwells among us. And so Luke, writes for us in this third chapter that in that is in the 15th year of the rule of caesar tiberius it was while pontius pilate was governor of judea herod was ruler of galilee his brother philip philip ruler of Iturea and treachotitus a ruler of abilene uh, during the chief priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, John Zacharias' son, out uh, in the wilderness at the time, received the message from God. The word of God came while he was in the wilderness. The word of God came while a lot of stuff was going on all around him. Let me say what I believe uh, and a lot of others, other preachers believe. God did not send this pandemic. God did not send it. God doesn't have to send plague to teach us. But God can use what's happening around us to remind us of what God has been trying to teach us all along. Now is not the time for the church to have a pity party. Well, people ain't coming back. People doing that. Let people do what they want to do. Somebody knows that even in the midst of the chaos, the confusion, even in the midst of the craziness, the word of God is still coming forward in your life. Can you hear it? Can you see it? Turn the radio down. Turn the television off. And you'll hear the word of God coming in your life. That's why, brothers and sisters, we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to give us the right rhythm and balance. Yes, we've got to be in tune with what's happening in the government, but the government ought never have the directing and final say determine what word of God is coming forth. The word of the Lord came to John while the governor was moving and while things were plotting, which tells me that regardless of what's happening, uh, you can still get a word from the Lord. God can put uh, through, God can cut through all the crap all around us and even in us to get God's word to us. That's why uh, even when there is great noise and obstacles in uh, your life, God's word can still settle you. 
not for some afterlife, but God's word can settle you even to strengthen you in this life. Have I got a witness? And in this instance, the word of God gave, that God gave to John was a part of his assignment. And that was to preach and practice a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now, I know many of us, for many of us, repentance had more to do with not participating in a narrow list of sins. Y'all know, like drinking, lying, cussing, stealing, fornicating. And for some of us, sin even included uh, listening to R&B and playing uh, cards on Sunday. Didn't y'all? Okay, that was just in us in L.A. That was just us in L.A., all right? You know, and as long as you ain't on that list, <laughs> then you think you scot-free. Some of us even going, going to the movies on Sunday. So as so long as you didn't do that, you can live the illusion of a sin-free life. And yet a more accurate understanding and definition of what it means to repent is uh, to in the Greek, the word is metanoia. That is to change one's mind, to change one's purpose, to change one's view, to change particularly the inner person. And let me say even specifically, metanoia means to change uh, the will in our reluctance to yielding to the will of God. Repentance really means yielding yourself to the will of God and trust that God actually does know best. Because we can profess that God knows best when it's convenient. But sometimes some of us Live like we know best and better than God. Look straight ahead. Help me, Holy Ghost. See, we have to allow ourselves to make repentance an attitude adjustment, which is something that is challenging, that's something that this pandemic challenged all of us to do, at least See, we tell our children, our grandchildren, we tell the people that that uh, other people in lives, you know, we, 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 we tell folks stuff like this. Fix your face. You better work on your attitude. You better fix it or I'll fix it for you. You better stop that crying, I'll give you something to cry about. Attitude. Adjustment. Now, what if God start working on us like we work on each other? Hmm, you think you got it all? I'll give you something to cry about. Lord, why? Why I got 25 pairs of shoes? I don't know which pair to wear today. Lord, why I got to wait 10 minutes for the blessing? It's supposed to come right now. Attitude adjustments. Anybody know this pandemic has changed your attitude on some level? It forced you to wait. <clears throat> See, the word of the Lord for this hour is for we, the people of God, to call ourselves and others to work on our attitudes, repentance. And as we repent and shift our mind, our purpose to God's will, uh, we can hear afresh what God of the Hebrew Bible and within this Gospel of Luke says that God requires. And that is that we love mercy, we do justice, 
and we walk humbly before our God. Humility isn't necessarily putting yourself down. Humility is putting yourself in perspective to God. When you understand uh, that God is the creator of everything and no matter what you do, it must always be in submission to the great and grand will of our God. We've got to love mercy by sharing what we have with others. Do justice by not using our position of authority, our status, our job, our resources to collect or extort falsely and to falsely accuse people. And to walk humbly with our God uh, is to be content with what you do have, even while you strive to get more, to be a blessing to somebody else. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, uh, I, I sometimes struggle with what we call um, complacency. Uh, for, for what I just described is not complacency, but rather it is a commitment to shift your attitude to remember that because God is the source of your supply, God will supply all of your needs according to God's riches in glory. And the reason why I struggle sometimes is this world, even, even the gospel as interpreted by the American capitalistic culture says the more things you have, the more land you have, the more blessed you are in God. And some of us have bought that and a whole lot of debt too. But somebody knows when you can be content that if you have much or if you have little, you learn how to use what you have and say, thank you, God, for everything that I have. Because even if I lose what I have, uh, because I know the supplier, he will resource from the source to be a blessing to who I am and where I am. For I believe that many of our actions that we ultimately call sin are really rooted in our struggle to believe God will partner with us to supply our needs. That's why I, I heard it from Carlton Pearson. It may have come from someone else, but I, I gravitated to it. The definition of sin is an inappropriate response to a legitimate need. An inappropriate response. And oftentimes the church, we focus on uh, the inappropriate response rather than helping people discover, shift their mind, repent uh, and help them discover the legitimate need and get the legitimate need met in legitimate ways through God's source. Preach, Bennett. I just preached the whole sermon. There. You don't have to shout. Don't shout. Don't shout. Think about it. Where does it need to happen in your life? Like Samuel Jackson said, what's in your wallet? What's in your heart and your attitude that needs to be changed? And as we work on our attitude by changing our mind and purpose to be more reflective of God's will for our lives, Luke writes uh, that John's assignment didn't stop with repentance as an end in and of itself. It is not about our own efforts but rather repentance can prepare the way for the Lord. Or in other words, the prophet Isaiah, the church, uh, is called to be a voice in the community as well as in the courthouse and in the Congress, declaring the way of the Lord to make the pathway for God to work in all three places and more so that every valley is exalted. That is, God will fill in the low and broken places of our lives with the filling of God's divine presence and the crazy glue of God's love, mercy, and strength. For Paul reminded us that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who left you. I don't care who you left. You need to know God will not leave you or me. 
But not only uh, will every valley be exalted and every mountain and hill made low, uh, that, that is, God will help us bring our problems and issues down to size. Not that they aren't big, but none of our issues and our problems are as big and bigger than God. Anybody know about some people, places or things that used to intimidate you and make you question yourself? Yet God can bring the, that situation into focus for that you can declare nothing will happen to me today that God and I can handle together. The crooked road shall be made straight and the rough uh, ways smooth. Someone knows that even when you were not at your best, God still got you through. Even when you had some loose ends to tighten up, God still opened the door. Even when you knew you were ho not holding it all together, and though you had it together from people's perspective, you had spit and scotch tape holding it together, God covered you. Growing up, my mama had some, some nail polish so that when the stockings ripped, Some of y'all know, some of y'all know you live in your life. Folks think you got it all together. They don't know you got some spiritual nail polish so that when that pantyhose start ripping. I'm done here. In verse 6, I was trying to get to 16, but I'll pick it up next time. Verse 6 <clears throat> is the sealer. <clears throat> verse 6 says, is the sealer for me because John's assignment was to declare God, Isaiah's prophetic word on behalf of God. That all mankind, all womankind, all humankind will see God's salvation. That is God's deliverance. Now in the context, salvation wasn't exclusively for the next life. Uh, in that it was, it was not necessarily an eternal dimension of heaven. But rather salvation or deliverance was placed on the lips of John uh, for this. As, for, as this life as well as in the life to come. If and for this life, God will allow the people of God to see salvation. See, we shall see God move on our behalf. Uh, Luke says that John had the unmitigated gall and arrogance to believe that God could still move in spite of everything happening. <sighs> We've got to shift how we understand ourselves and our purpose in God. Every Advent is another opportunity for us to see ourselves, to peel back the layers of, of, of lovefulness and the layers that make us believe we are not worthy of what God has done. Every Advent, we have another opportunity to hear the Lord come again, again in our lives to say, change your attitude. Remember, uh, it ain't about you, the head and not the tail. No, that's a wrong analogy. You are my child, God says. I don't care where you are. Don't care what location you find yourself in because everybody's not going to be in the front. It's, I'm thankful that God doesn't just show up in the front, but God will show up in the back. I'm thankful God just don't show up in the most popular. God will show up when don't nobody know you but you and God. Yay! We can begin to see the events in our lives as God moving and coordinating the events in our lives in such a way to either deliver us from the situation 
are to deliver the situation from controlling us. That's why some of us are seeing ourselves being delivered uh, from always needing external uh, situations to change before we change. That's why uh, we don't pay uh, uh, as much. Uh, we don't we, we don't pay as much uh, and pray, I should say, Lord, change them. I've learned, I've learned, I'm learned. <laughs> Y'all are helping me and I thank God. I've shifted my prayer a little bit. Lord, don't just change your people. Lord, change me because I'm one of your people. Change my mind, God. I'm one of your people. Change my attitude, God. I'm one of your people. I wonder, is there anybody in this place uh, who knows that the Lord knows how to deliver you? That God, that you have seen the salvation of the Lord. For you know God never wastes God's deliverance. God delivers us from something to something. God delivers us from sin to service. God to saves us from ourselves to help others. God delivers us from powerless, delivers us into our powerful purpose. Uh, do you see what I see? Yeah, I know some folk look at what's happening and say, tis, 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 things are going to hell. Uh, others of us got to look and say, hey, it's an opportunity for God to strut God's stuff. I think it was Heber Brown who said, God will take your struggle uh, and turn it into a stage. I think, do you see what I see? I see God getting ready to turn some things around. Not out there, but up in here. God's getting ready to turn up in here. So do you see what I see? I see God wanting to do a new thing inside of us. Inside of you, inside of you, and inside of me. Do you perceive it? Do you hear it? God wants to do a new thing. Let us stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here. You would say, Pastor, this was a word. We were able to laugh a little bit. And you know God uses laughter to help us in a non-defensive way to look at ourselves. And while the particular examples of the laughter may not deal directly with your situation, but you know in ways in which God is calling you to repent. God is calling you to shift your mind. Because some of us know we can give up one addiction and trade it in for another. Addictions are just symptoms of a deeper need of repentance, changing. We ought not be afraid of that word. It's not a word of condemnation. It's really a word of opportunity. Change your view. Maybe you're here, brother, sister. You just want some prayer because you realize this message challenged you. You're trying to figure out how much do I keep pushing? How much do I just say, thank you, Lord, for what I have? How, how many th times do I, do I keep pressing my way? And how many times do I just pause to get some rest? Maybe this is your word. Just lift your hand, brother. Lift your hand, sister. If this is you, I want to be in prayer with you. I want to pray in prayer. I see you. I see you. I see you all over. I see you. God, we just come asking your strength right now for our brother, our sister, who lifted their hands, and many also lift their hearts to you. The human mind wants to figure everything out wants to have a plan, a, wants to have the kind of plan that is predictable. And yet before and particularly now in this pandemic, 
We're learning that we can plan, but ultimately we've got to trust you. Because life has a way of tossing our plans in the wind back and forth. So God, I pray for every person. I pray whether they're in this sanctuary or whether they're online. I pray, God, that you might touch them. Help them not be afraid of that word repent. Help them to realize that the word of God that comes is really coming to bring life. For some, yes, there may be specific things and actions they need to take. But at a deeper level, all of us are called to allow you, as the scripture says, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So God, teach us how to allow your Holy Spirit to discipline us, to renew our minds, to see things in different ways, that expands how we understand, to know that your will is not to harm us, but to help us. You do not look to punish, but to prosper us so that we can be productive in our lives. Pray that Mount Airy might provide the kind of space of not only safety, but also courage so that we can face ourselves through your Holy Spirit, not out of condemnation, but out of reflection and even contentment. And even as we strive to grow in you, there can also be a sense of contentment that thank you, God, that things are as well as they are. God, I ask in your name, that you might allow this Advent season to be a time where we are reminded that you do straight things in crooked places, that you use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So God, I ask, even now as we continue on this Advent season, for those for which this season is challenging because of the natural processes of grief and bereavement touch their lives, God, continue to hold them, continue to provide what they need in order to make it through this season. Bring your salvation close to them. We ask now, God, that you teach us how to rejoice with those who rejoice and grieve with those who grieve. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, bless your people. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Ask that you prepare your elements. Only God and you in moments know what you ultimately need. We can, all, we can know what we want, but we also know what we need. We're thankful that in whatever area of brokenness you may find yourself in, there is wholeness in Jesus, to Jesus. There is power in the blood, power for the blood to heal, to preserve, to sustain life, to Jesus.
Amen. May be seated just for a few moments. One of those brochures, one of those 10th anniversary brochures. I want to, uh, let's thank God for the word of God on today. I am thankful and grateful to God. Fast, fast, we have one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am grateful and thankful to God for not only our musicians, thank God for them. Our audio, thank God for audio. Thank God for ushers and security. Our nurses and healing team, thank God for them. Thank God for our meditation leader. Our ministers, thank God for our ministers. Amen. Let's thank God also for our deacons, our trustees, our finance, church staff. Why is that important for me? It's important for me in this season. Again, um, the word that was in the text that I preached from um, dealt with complacency. Complacency just speaks when you assume that what happens is supposed to happen and always happens. There, there are ways in which um, um, I just don't want to take it for granted. So I want to thank, that's why I thank God for everybody every week. Uh, we don't know what happens in between the weeks. Um, I'm thankful that, um, and that we've talked, deacons and I talked yesterday, and not necessarily that we would change it, but it's just good to know that, that people, instead of, instead of, you know, I'm, I grew up Baptist born, Baptist bred. When I die, I'm gonna be Baptist dead. That's how I grew up. And in growing up, you had communion, it wasn't the Lord's Supper, it was communion, a Lord's Supper on the first Sunday. And you had um, uh, crackers, saltine crackers, and, and grape juice to make sure you help people who, who, who got, you know, struggle with drinking. That's what I was told when I was growing up, right? Crazy, right? So, <laughs> So that's what I was told, right? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So of course, you know, some stuff, again, it was good then, it worked then. But the fact that for the last year and nine, nine months, eight months, eight months, nine months now, we have done communion every Sunday for those who are, who are willing. And, and I'm just going to share, for the foreseeable future, we're going to do this because um, there's still, I'm so glad to see you all, and you all are glad to see each other, but we got some Mount Airy people online, and we don't want to leave them behind. We don't want to leave them behind. If there are Sundays you feel you just can't take it, you do what you've got to do for you. But th we're going to continue to to, uh, to celebrate the Lord's sacrifice every Sunday because we don't want to leave any disciple of Mount Airy behind. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me uh, briefly share again um, just a collective. Would all persons who were part of Mount Airy's uh, core team of Connect, core team of Connect, will you stand? What if since in the 10 years, even if you're not active now in the 10 years that you that we've been here, let's stand. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. I want to thank you. Figure out one some way to uh, Rev. Maxine, figure out. We want to figure out some kind of way to have some type of gathering in our recognition. Um, this was a milestone week uh, for me. Um, in addition to doing, I know when I first came, I did try, I was involved in just so many other things, uh, but eventually we, we built this uh, organization. We together collectively with other institutions built the organization. Um, we've gotten a local, regional, and um, national 
attention, national, national recognition. Um, so much so that there are ways in which um, this, con this organization is growing in its power, all right? And uh, we, are, as pastor, are making decisions about our particular role. We will stay in connect. It is, we believe it's a powerful, powerful organization. Uh, but can, can your pastor acknowledge he died? This is a heavy lift. I laugh and joke, but this is a heavy lift dealing with uh, the politics, the way that we deal with it. Um, and we'll continue to be involved. But this was a powerful, powerful sort of booklet that talks about not just me and not, but other people of Mount Airy and other people, uh, other institutions. Um, it's not a perfect organization, but it's an organization that received power, that developed and worked its own power uh, so that we could make legislative as well as leadership development uh, um, accomplishments. And so again, let's thank God for Connect. Thank God for all who there. Uh, we had our annual Holy Spirit discernment session. A few of you were able to come out. Um, we shared uh, ultimately uh, God has blessed us and God continues to bless us. Uh, we need you to continue to commit yourself to God's tithing uh, principle, uh, tithes and offerings that we can continue to do some of the projects uh, that we have done. I'm not going to go into them now, um, but, but we'll share in booklet form so at your leisure you can see uh, what we have been doing in this interim, in this interim. Um, and then, let me see, uh, we're going to have a youth holiday celebration December the 19th at doing our 9.30 a.m. worship service. Monetary and card donations may be left in the church office, unwrapped gift Gifts may be placed in the box in the North X until Wednesday the 15th. Um, excuse me, please be mindful of that. And then finally, I want to share, well, not finally, I want to share also on the 19th, uh, Minister Mike Jones. Um, he has uh, grown up and uh, matured, I would believe, in this, in the, amen. Amen, some of y'all left. Amen. He has matured. Um, and actually doing very well at, uh, at seminary. Doing very well, very well um, at seminary. Uh, be graduating um, this month and um, has actually uh, been asked to join a staff of the church that he's working uh, with down there um, to, do, uh, to do some priestly kinds of stuff as well as vision uh, stuff for the congregation. And so he's asked, uh, that we ordain him um, for that service, and that is a part of our Baptist tradition. He will have a local, a local, Bapt a local church ordination um, that will take place. Uh, we will do it officially during this worship service um, on December the 19th. Amen. Um, and there are more. There, there's more good news. Can't tell you all now, but there's more good news about. Uh, fruit of this ministry, uh, expanding this ministry and doing other things beyond uh, Bridgeport and even Connecticut. And so we're thankful and grateful uh, for uh, their fruit and for you, Mount Airy, for being good ground for people in ministry to grow. Amen. Um, church will be closed on Friday, December the 24th, so the staff can... Um, can um, can prepare themselves. We will we will have Christmas church uh, in person for those who will come on the 25th at 10 a.m. One hour. We will have in person uh, worship this hybrid mix of both in person and online on the 30 the 31st of December. We will have 6 p.m. Vesper for um, uh, for those who would not want to be out uh, during the midnight hour. And for those who do want to be out, we will have our watch night service on the 31st at 11 p.m. We're gonna do again about a one hour, a little bit more than one hour service where we can pray our way into the new year. Amen? Amen, amen. Um, I think we're, let me, let me say finally, as we move forward, about this, what is it, Omicron? 
Omicron, all right, this new variant. Uh, you know, let me just share word, continue to do what you've been doing. If what you've been doing is the right appropriate thing, right? <laughs> Amen. If it's the right thing. Now, if you've just been throwing caution to the wind, put you on a mask at least. All right. I want to encourage everybody. This is me. It's not a directive. Wrestle with why you're not vaccinated. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying wrestle with it. This is not going away. As people have said in just about all of humanity, there are, very, there are different strands that will come. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you any medical advice. Be clear. Online, I'm not giving anybody any medical advice. I'm being a pastor who wants to continue to enjoy in-person and online fellowship. And I don't want anybody putting themselves nor us in undue jeopardy. We're doing these services for those of you who feel comfortable coming, all right? Um, for those of you who are online, we will have all of these services online. You can continue to watch and to participate online and to pay your tithes and offerings online. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I ain't said straight talk for straight understanding in a long while. So that's your straight talk for straight understanding. Amen. That's it. If I, if I go over the top. Oh, yes. All right. We're going to go down today. Um, please be mindful of all the other announcements. We're going to go down today. Um, I'm going to ask that you stand with me. We're going to play. I'm going to do a prayer. Um, Brother Michael Porter is asked to pray for his mother. He was in hospice, so we're going to pray. Where's Brother Porter? There he is in the back. All right. We're going to, we're going to and again, because of COVID, I'm not going to ask anybody to come down. I'm not going to ask you to touch. But, but you can set your intention on healing. Amen? Set your intention on healing as we pray for Brother Mike Porter and his mother and others who may be in recovery and going through. God of healing, God of grace, God of wholeness, God of mercy. God whose thoughts are not our thoughts and ways are far beyond our ways. To you, God, we come thanking you for your visitation amongst us, your presence that will guide us as we move from this place. In particular, we thank you for your healing power that's already at work. And even when we can't see it in our physical sight, you teach us different ways to understand your healing. So right now, we lift up our brother, Brother Porter. We pray, first of all, God, that you continue to heal his mind, his spirit. Encourage him to know that his mother is ultimately in your hands. Not the doctor's hands, not her hands, not his hands, but your hands. And yet, God, you know his dilemma. You know his struggle. And so, God, be with him. Journey with him. Raise up conversation partners and companions along the journey so that as he journeys, you know what he desires. You know, and so we lift that energy to you, healing energy. And even now, God, we pray that his mother might Sense the energy from this space so that whether she could communicate it with him or not, in her spirit, she can get to the point where she can feel and believe it is well with my soul. Guide and direct Brother Porter, his mother, but not just them, all who perhaps did not speak forth today but you know what they leave this space having to contend with. You know the burdens on their hearts. You know 
what they must face. And so God, give them your strength. Give them your peace. Give them a power so that they don't have to lean on their own power. Because you know our power will give out <laughs> at the most inconvenient time. But it's right then that your power reminds us that we've been making it on your power from the jump. So God, as we move from this place, but never your presence, grant traveling grace and mercy, healing energy until we meet again. Amen. Go in peace and power. Greet somebody. Well, no, don't greet somebody. Walk out. <laughs> Pray for your pastor. Amen. Pray for your pastor. <laughs>